contradictory session. I'm sure you will enjoy. I hope you all enjoyed the videos which have been specially selected for Chanakya. I hope you had a good time walking, looking at the grand finale. May I now request the dignitaries. May I request the dignitaries to take their place on dais. Uh, President MMA, Mr. Mahalingam, Mr. V. Shankar, Senior Vice President MMA, Mr. Ravi Vishwanathan, Managing Director, TVS Supply Chain Solutions, Mr. P. Ilango, Convention Chair, and Group Captain R. Vijay Kumar. <laughs> yeah, Mr. V. Shankar is the senior vice president MMA, is the founder of CAMS, director Access Investments Private Limited. May I have his AV, please? Mr. V. Shankar, an IITM, IIMC graduate who worked briefly, then went on to found CAMS, Computer Age Management Services Private Limited, in the year 1988 to provide a platform and services to the Indian mutual fund industry. CAMS was recently listed. He is involved with several organizations that promote entrepreneurship as well as with both his alma mater. <laughs> May I now invite Mr. Shankar to deliver the welcome address for this session. Thanks. Good evening. Do I really need to welcome you all again? Or have you been welcomed earlier? Anyway, welcome again. Has it been a good session so far? Yes or no? Best is yet to come. Of course, Chanakya was very good. But finally, we have to recognize and award the people who have won all these prizes. And that is exactly what we are going to do. See, we had some very good sessions. Sustainability. I want to give you an example. If my father had borrowed a lot of money, and left me with the debt, where would I be today? As a prudent father, he left me money, he did not leave me debt. That is exactly the issue with sustainability. We, the older generation, are borrowing from the environment and leaving you young people to pick up the debt later. And people who come after you are going to be even more trouble. It is in your interest to ensure that people like us the companies that you work for are responsible because whatever the problems will come tomorrow, they will be your problems, not our problems. We will be long gone. So it is very important that the younger you are, the more emphasis you place on sustainability. This has been explained in many ways by many people today, but I thought it is so important for you all personally that I should say this all over again. Now, our chief guest, Mr. Ravi Vishwanathan, good friend of mine. He is the managing director of TVS Supply Chain Solutions. Supply chain is a very, very challenging field, very operationally intense. And for us to persuade him to take some time out and come here, Ravi, thank you so much.
he is going to deliver the valedictory address he is also going to present the awards to the winners of these last couple of weeks i take this opportunity to congratulate the winners of all the competitions so far and i will welcome them shortly on the dais to receive their awards my special welcome to guests from the management institutes please don't go away this is an important part of the evening please stay and honor the people who have won once again with a very warm welcome to this particular last session i hand the floor to ravi thank you thank you so much mr shankar ladies and gentlemen mr ravi vishwanathan is the managing director tvs supply chain solutions may i have his av please mr ravi vishwanathan is responsible for driving strategy formulation and execution he is implementing a transformation agenda to drive digital operating system at tvs scs enabling a digital journey and a zero touch process to engage with customers in the supply chain space seamlessly Ravi had also donned the role of the president Madras Management Association and had been part of the executive council of NASCOM since 2015. It's a pleasure having you with us this evening sir. May I have the privilege of inviting you to deliver the valedictory address. good evening some energy guys good evening all right thank you so first let me uh, you know thank captain group captain uh, vijay kumar for having me here today it's indeed a privilege it's an honor and it's uh, in many ways coming back home i have not been to the student convention in probably a decade so it's very interesting to come back and see all the young energetic faces in the crowd so thank you vijay I also want to take this opportunity to uh, congratulate the Madras Management Association for having won the prestigious IMA award for the best management association in the country. You know what is just amazing is that uh, this is the 14th consecutive year that MMA has won this award which is an absolute record and in many ways it reflects on the dedication commitment and passion that uh, MMA has towards forwarding managerial excellence so a big round of applause uh, for mma and i want to you know congratulate suresh raman Mah you know mahalingam uh, shankar and the entire executive committee for all the wonderful work that uh, mma as an organization has been doing so i'm i'm really excited here because this is the gen z and to be in front of gen z the future of this country and you know i want to first congratulate all of you uh, to you know where you are here today and also you know you're entering into a very very exciting stage uh, in 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 your in 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 the in the uh, history of india actually i think what's amazing is the fact that uh, india is standing out as like like a beacon and in the middle of a lot of economic chaos there is this one shining light which is uh, showing tremendous economic prosperity and more importantly i think the economic activity that one sees in this country is just amazing and you are walking into this india with enormous potential and uh, incredible amount of economic activity that's happening in the country post covid to recover and to get to a 6% gdp and the opportunity to go to double digit gdp is really is what we are staring uh, in front of us and you are going to be right in the middle of that steering uh, india uh, into that double digit gdp growth and taking us to our uh, destined leadership position in the next decade you know we are shining in multiple uh, aspects of of industry i think if i look uh, from where we were just maybe a decade ago to where we are today i think the country's infrastructure has grown tremendously and i represent the supply chain industry so in many ways i'm a huge beneficiary of that and i'll talk a little bit about that whether it's manufacturing whether it is services i think all around we see enormous development enormous opportunity uh, in india 
And I think the theme of this, uh, this, this year um, is, is so apt because it's really about innovation for the future. And, you know, I would say technovation is really what uh, is driving a lot of things in this world. You know, Professor Clayton Christensen uh, from the Harvard Business School, the late Professor Clayton Christensen, who's written quite a few books on innovation, you know, speaks about innovation around two fundamental dimensions. One, he calls it as disruptive innovation, the other as incremental innovation. And disruptive innovation is something which happens not every day. You know, it happens once in a while and it disrupts the industry, it disrupts the ecosystem, disrupts things that you are doing on a regular basis and creates enormous velocity of growth because of that disruption. He used to be in the board of one of the companies that I worked for earlier and he used to often say that the Indian IT outsourcing industry disrupted the service delivery methodology in the information technology uh, across the globe. By bringing in a concept of doing work remotely from offshore and thereby both accelerating and increasing efficiency multifold and doing it at an incredibly differential price point which made IT services uh, get consumed much more. And he called that a disruptive innovation. But companies in the IT sector continue to incrementally innovate every day. And incremental innovation is really about what we do every day in our processes, in our methods, in our technology solutions, in deploying technology, use of newer technologies and how it will ultimately benefit the end customer. Uh, and I think that is key for any organization's growth. I call incremental innovation as hygiene and disruptive innovation, which is uh, probably a stroke of genius. Organizations, therefore, I think have to invest in incremental innovation on a regular basis, something which needs to do, which needs to happen every day. I know many organizations, therefore, uh, encourage hackathons, uh, bring in young minds to therefore come and say, hey, uh, how do we look at our process differently? Are there efficiencies that we can look at? You know, is there a brainwave which says I can do these things differently, faster, better? Uh, and more uh, efficiently, right? I still remember, um, I think 15 years ago, we ran a hackathon in, in the company that I worked in, and this young boy who came in, not maybe 15, maybe 20 years ago, this young kid came and he presented to us an innovative idea about having uh, the phone to measure the number of steps that one would take every day. And we were sitting in, uh, in, as a panel, and we were saying, what sort of an idea is this, you know? Who would want to step, uh, measure uh, the steps that one takes every day? We dismissed that idea. That, that kid didn't even make it to the shortlist. Only to be reminded every time I saw him in the campus, he would look at me and, and he would say, Sir, I was the one who gave this idea which got rejected. And that is the power of differential thinking and that's the power of youth. And that is something which transformed me a lot to look at different solutions in a very differentiated way. And I think innovation is really all about that, is to how do you think differently and how do you put that usage. And today it's, it's, it's just amazing that probably every, every one of you in this room uh, probably has a device which measures how many steps you take, how many calories you burnt and all of that. Yet 20 years ago that didn't seem like a great idea. And I think from an organization perspective we need to encourage all of that. If I continue in the same vein on disruptive innovation, I think India is at the forefront of the disruptive innovation right now. What India has done through its digital payment infrastructure is to completely disrupt the payment systems, not in India, but across the globe. Today, the QR code has become so ubiquitous that you can now use your phone to pay uh, tender coconut vendor, you could use it to pay a plumber who comes home, you could use it to pay for grocery that you buy in, in, the, in the store, you could pay your hotel bills using that, or you could go to a luxury mall and buy the most expensive item, all of this through UPI, and it's completely disrupting the entire payment systems across the globe. And in many ways, I think we have to laud ourselves because this is so unique and this is so disruptive that many people didn't quite realize what the power of this disruption was and is going to be. And what is exciting about this is that the interface to this is so 
simple. It is the same interface that you use whether you buy a tender coconut or whether you're paying for your plumber or whether you're going to buy grocery or whether you go to a five-star hotel and pay your bill. It's the same interface. My mother, all of 86 years of age, she uses her phone to pay the telephone bill every month using UPI. It is so easy. And she learned that when she was 84. It is unbelievable what this has done. And this is disruptive innovation. And these are things that I think we'll, we will see more of uh, in, in India. And India will lead. And you are going to be in that leadership position driving that change. And that is what you need to embrace as, as management students coming out of campus. Closer to my own industry, you know, a lot of similar disruption is happening in the global supply chain, in the, in the supply chain in India, for example. Just like the, I mean, like the digital payment infrastructure, there is now a concept of a digital supply chain infrastructure. There is already huge investments in roads across the country. There is a tremendous pace at which this is getting deployed. And therefore, time it takes for us to move a truck from Chennai to Delhi has reduced by about 300%. GST has just made this process very, very smooth. And the ability for us to track something real time is here and now. So in TVA supply chain solutions, we have systems which interface with the MOT, which is the Ministry of Road Transport and uh, Highways. And we actually can now tap into the Wahan database and find out information on vehicle fitness, driver uh, rating, all of that in real time so that I can engage with my uh, partners in a more proactive way. Today, all of the fast tag stations across the country are all available through an API interface. So our application tracks through fast tag every vehicle which passes these fast tag stations. So if you look at the Delhi Chennai route, and then you say there are 35 or 40 or 50 or 100 fast tag uh, toll plazas, I know exactly between which two fast tag stations my trucks are. And that brings in the ability for me to predict delivery times in a more accurate fashion and thereby making material available to my customers uh, in a more predictable fashion, increasing efficiency of the manufacturing sector itself. Tremendous amount of opportunity, tremendous uh, amount of digital uh, disruption which is happening in, in our space. And all this is happening now and in India, and all of us are everyday participants to this disruption. In TVS, if I were to look at multiple examples, you know, it is really about how we engage with our uh, employee community. We have 18,000 employees globally. And how do we take these inputs and convert them into opportunities for us to make our customers' uh, services better? So let me give you uh, two examples, if time permits. We work with a lot of two-wheelers, uh, two-wheeler manufacturers uh, in the country. And for one such two-wheeler manufacturer, we actually uh, manage their entire CKD, which is their complete knockdown kits, which they export to dealers outside of India. So when we took over the operations, one of the ideas that a young person came up in the field was to say, you know, there are parts for different models of the bike, which look very similar to the naked eye, but they're actually very, uh, very subtly different. And there were errors which were creeping up, which meant that uh, inventory was going to the dealers overseas, but that was not liquidable because they were not able to assemble the bike. So we used a, 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 a visual computing technology, just a camera-based technology, which looks at each and every part which goes into a kit, and then makes sure that the right part goes into the kit 100% of the time. So within six months of deployment, we were now able to reduce the errors to 0%, which means that every single CKD which was shipped was actually getting done uh, 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 error-free. And why I state this is because this incremental innovation is coming from within the workforce on a daily basis. And we need to have systems and processes in place which capture these incremental innovative ideas and convert them into opportunities for us to serve our customers better. I'll give you another example of, uh, of what we do in the UK. One of the things that we do is to deliver smart meters to our customers in the utility sectors so that their field engineers can go and deploy these smart, in, smart meters uh, every day. So a technician typically, typically does five or six smart meter 
installations in a day. So the way it works is that the technician you know, gets his uh, work order for the day. He then goes to the, his office, goes to the warehouse, picks up all the material, puts it in his car, and then he drives down and fixes all of the material. He comes back in the evening and returns all of the material back to the warehouse, whatever material that needs to be returned. So there's a simple idea from our UK team. We said, look, uh, you know what? You don't ask your technician to come to the office at all. You send us the work orders. We will kit all the uh, smart meters. We will install digital locks in the, in, the, in the cars of your technicians. We'll open it in the night and put seven or eight or nine, depending on the work orders, the seven or eight kits into your trunk. And we'll also collect the previous day's returns and bring it back to the warehouse so that it can be fixed all between eight in the night and eight in the morning, so that in the morning the technician wakes up, he sees his iPhone or, or his uh, phone and he says, okay, these are the eight orders, these are the addresses I need to go and deliver. I know that eight kits are already in my, in my trunk and it gets delivered. Incremental innovation, driving efficiency. So now the technician, instead of doing five or six installations a day, is able to do seven or eight every day. And that improves productivity efficiency by a factor. Technovation is something which is absolutely important and real, and it has to be done by every organization. You can't escape technology, and technology has to be in the heart of every business that we, that we do. I think, uh, you know, uh, many people before me spoke about being responsible, um, I think inclusive. I work for the TVS uh, Mobility Group, very proud of our heritage, and we pride in the fact that we are a company which makes profit for a purpose. And that purpose is really about giving back to the community. Prior to TVS, I worked in the Tata Group, and I can tell you that these are two stellar groups which put back into the community a lot of things that they get from the community. Whether it's hospitals, schools, uh, skilling, retraining, uh, employment generation, all of that, it's just amazing how uh, the group functions. And TVS Supply Chain Solutions is no different. We have a skilling school outside of Chennai where we actually work with villagers and bring in youths, youth who can get skilled on warehouse operations. So when you come to our training school, you'll actually find it's like a driving school there will be lanes and we are having young people getting trained on how to operate a forklift, how to operate a reach truck, and they get certified and get deployed in the industry in and around the environs that they come from. And what is most gratifying is it is inclusive. And it is a very strong diversity mix in this. So when I went for a graduating ceremony three months back, I was pleasantly surprised to see 12 young girls who were part of this training school, and they've all been trained in operating forklifts and reach trucks. It's amazing what you can do with very strong uh, people who are willing to learn. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, cricket. The World Cup is around. I'm a big fan of Ravi Ashwin. I follow him on, Inst on Instagram. And then recently, I saw a very interesting post from Ravi, Ravi Chandra Ashwin. You know, he's probably the world's number one bowler, maybe the number one spinner. And he goes to the National Cricket Academy three weeks back to hone his skills. You know, it's amazing that this guy, who everybody believes is in the twilight of his career, goes back to the NCA to hone his skills. And he, he basically has tweeted saying that, you know, uh, he calls it, uh, the capacity to learn is a gift, the ability to learn is a skill, but the willingness to learn is a choice. And I think that choice is in front of all of us. It's inevitable that we have to participate in this learning throughout our journey, every day. And my mother is a stark example of how an 84-year-old lady learns how to use a cell phone so that she can be self-dependent and not depend on somebody else to pay her telephone bills. I think all of us need to imbibe this trait. I'll only say this, that I don't think the willingness to learn is a choice anymore. I don't think we have a choice. It's not a multiple choice question, we can let it go. You guys need to make sure that you have that willingness to learn. And that willingness is in your control, all the others are not. So let me leave this talk with you that look, you know, 
technology is innovate in, in, in inevitable technology led innovation is going to drive a lot of things in the future india is in the forefront of this technology disruption we are in the forefront of disrupting technology in every industry we have a very very strong investment in infrastructure our economic indicators are looking very strong you are all coming out at a time when things are exceptionally good your focus should be just to put your head down and ensure that we execute exceptionally well and don't forget to incrementally innovate every day let me just conclude by saying this one thing that i've learned in in my close to 40 years of working with two phenomenal groups the tata group and the tvs group look the ability to change is very important so practices will change every day practices should will and always change but principles should never thank you so much and all the very best to every one of you thank you so much mr ravi vishwanathan an excellent message there both technology and innovation are inevitable may now invite uh, mr mahalingam president mma to present a memento to the chief guest mr ravi vishwanathan may also invite the other dignitaries to join him on the dais please Thank you, sir, for sparing your valuable time and being here with us this evening. You talked about how India is in the forefront of innovation, particularly with this uh, payment gateway system, and so many other takeaways from your talk today. Thank you so much. Yes, students, let's give him a big round of applause. Despite his busy schedule, he's taken his time off to be here with you all and talk about the theme of the convention. May I now invite Group Captain Vijay Kumar, Executive Director MMA, for introduction of the awards, please. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my proud privilege to introduce the various awards. Uh, what was conducted as a prelude to the MMA uh, All India Management Student Convention. and uh, mma organizes every year a number of unique uh, competitions as a prelude as i mentioned before the first competition organized was paper presentation competition a team of two students are invited to present papers on the theme of the convention the written presentation and the oral presentations are judged by a panel of eminent jury and the winning team is awarded uh, 20000 15000 and 10000 rupees first second and third this year the paper presentation competition was conducted on the theme of the convention innovate for responsible tomorrow and over 50 students uh, registered and participated in the paper presentation competition the second competition what we organize the business plan competition where each team a team of two students uh, uh, will submit a business plan on a commercially viable business idea on any industry service of their choice the idea presented were evaluated by venture capitalists and the winners were selected over 40 students registered for this year's business plan competition third was the big debate the big debate is always provocative uh, uh, the debate is always provocative the heated debate is all the more so the objective of debate is to enable the students uh, to showcase their communication and logical reasoning skills the abc of communication accuracy clarity and brevity will be exhibited before a strong audience a team of two students from each of the institution will one speak for the for and again uh, against opposition proposition the theme for the big debate this year was artificial intelligence will it replace human labor or enhance productivity in the workplace we had some interesting debate and over 46 students registered for this big debate competition fourth was the think tank the master brain management quiz competition the inter b school quiz test knowledge the management students on the world of management and business around us rather than testing only the memory the format of the event will also contestants apply their whole body acquired expertise and the knowledge on the presented question forcing them to make the correction and connection to the question and come up with some correct answers over 80 students registered for this year's management quiz competition we also present mma mba awards uh, 
every year mma had presenting the award of rupees 10000 uh, each to the rank holder from mma from uh, anna university and university of madras the objective of this award uh, encourages academic excellence in management students and by rewarding the academic achievements mba course of these universities and one of the mba awards for mm uh, madras university is sponsored by uh, nirmala prasad endowment fund by mop vaishnav college Chanakya the mastermind you witnessed just a few moments ago the best management student of the year 2023 award the flagship event of management student convention is the competition title Chanakya mastermind to select the best management student of the year the award recognizes the only one that is the Chanakya mastermind and who is crowned as a Chanakya and uh, the criteria for uh, fitting finale on the stage where the chosen finalist present before you went through two rounds and you all watched it the final round final stage witness as i mentioned to you uh, five leaving the stage and five in the fray of panel interview and uh, which included a rapid fire resulting in selection and crowning of the winner of mma the chanakya mastermind for the year 2023 with a cash award of rupees 1 lakh and this one person was selected from the nomination of about 5000 candidates from all over india May I now request our chief guest, Mr. Ravi Vishwanathan, MD, TBS Chapel Chain Solution, to kindly step forward and do the honor of presenting the award to the winners of various competition. May I also request other dignitaries to please join the chief guest in presenting the award, Mr. Ravi. So let me read out the uh, winners' names, and I'll request all of you to quickly come over and take the uh, uh, collective awards. Let's begin um, with business plan competition. Students, I want you all to just keep clapping for the next ten minutes. Cash out of ten thousand is what is there for the paper presentation, and all the prizes for paper presentation are sponsored.
कॉम्पिटिशन कॉम्पिटिशन मिस सुबा एंड मिस मिस कश्मीरा मिस चित्रा हेल्प एंड रिसर्च एंड ग्रो Well done, Krishika and SSN School of Management. I think SSN guys are here. Give her a big applause. Mr. Gajiravan is the father of uh, Sukumari. She had won gold medal, the topper of Anna University for the year 2023-2022. Much for the batch. So she is working in Bangalore. She has requested her father to come and collect the prize on her behalf. So.
Students, give her a big hand. Such an awaited moment of the evening. What is Chanakya the master by two thousand? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know we are coming almost to the end of the convention. A convention of this magnitude cannot be organized when you have a leader behind you solidly supporting from the thing. And this year, the convention chairman is Mr. Ilongo, uh, who is a member of the managing committee. He was the chairman of the uh, convention committee who stood uh, with us like a rock along with the con uh, convention committee members, not only in designing, conceptualizing, ideating the speakers, getting the sponsors, getting you all the facilities, what you got, getting so many competitions done. All this is not possible without the support of the convention chairman. Now I request uh, President MMA to present a memento to our uh, chairman of the convention committee as an appreciation, token of appreciation for all the labor of love what you have done to us, sir. Mr. Elongo, really we appreciate, you have been a great source of support to us. Yeah, Mr. Apurva Bhandari has been uh, kind enough to provide the mementos, the green memento uh, to all the dignitaries today. May I request Mr. Yelango to hand over green mementos to all the three dignitaries on the dais and may I have Mr. Bhandari also on the dais, please. To Mr. Ravi Vishwanathan. Mahalingam, Shankar, and Group Captain Vijay Kumar. Thank you, Mr. Bhandari. Thank you so much. A tree has been planted on behalf of all those people who have received this uh, memento today, and that will be monitored by the Sankalp Foundation. So, ladies and gentlemen, with this, we come to the end of this uh, convention. May I now request all of you to rise for the national anthem. Sorry, oh, sorry, oh, I'm so sorry. Ah, Mr. Ilongo, may I now request you to come and deliver the word of thanks, please. Sorry, sorry I missed it all. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I know you are all set to go, but uh, <clears throat> I want to set a context for the vote of thanks. 
uh, in the morning as I introduced the theme, I promise that we work very hard to ensure you all get a 360 degree perspective on this topic of ESG. And I also said by end of this session as you leave this hall, you will have a new perspective. I just want to test how much we have achieved it. Those of you, and it's a honest answer, those of you who believe your perspective on ESG changed or evolved at the end of today, please raise your hands. Okay. Thank you. You know, whenever or whoever changes your perspective on anything in life, that's a very important moment for you personally. So I'm sure all the work that was done by MMA in organizing this event, as it has resulted in changing some of your perspective on this topic, we should all be grateful for everyone who contributed to this. And that's what I'm going to do. It will be slightly longer than the usual word of thanks that you would have seen. But I want to be very specific to acknowledge contribution made by each and everyone. Let me begin with the chief guest for the validatory session, Mr. Ravi Vishwanathan, for a very insightful talk that must have inspired many of you. I thank both Ms. Abulba Bitra, partner ESG KPMG, for her for delivering the keynote address, and Mr. K. V. Ramani, founder and chancellor of Sai University, for delivering the inaugural address this morning. My special thanks to all the eminent speakers for sparing their valuable time, some of them traveling from Calcutta, Delhi, Bangalore, to articulate their views which I'm sure inspired the students. MMA is grateful to Mr. Murari S. Jagan, management consultant, for ably conducting the grand finale of Chanakya, the mastermind competition. I thank all the participants who enthusiastically joined the various competition, paper presentation competition, business plan competition, the big debate, management quiz, and the Chanakya mastermind competition. We gratefully acknowledge the services of the panel of jury for the grand finale Chanakya, the mastermind competition, and a very special thanks to Mr. Dwarakanathan, Mr. Vasudevan, Mr. Jambunathan for their help in selecting the finalists from a large pool of 5,000 plus participants. We thank the panel of judges for preliminary round of various competitions for evaluating the written and oral presentation by participating teams. The jury of for pre-final Chanakya, the mastermind for selecting the top 10 finalists. We acknowledge and appreciate the presence of distinguished invitees and past presidents of MMA, members of MMA management committee. We wholeheartedly thank all our sponsors for their generosity and graciousness. Conventions of this magnitude and stature can only be organized with the support and involvement of industry and organization. We wish to place on record our deep appreciation and gratitude to all the convention sponsors and partners who have come forward to assist financially in making this management student convention a reality and grand success. I would specifically appreciate Mr. Apurva Bandari, who has traveled all the way from Dehradun to give an e tree to each of the panel speakers and guests, which the, in, in their respective names, a tree has been planted and they can track the, its growth and what a fine feeling each of them will have. Please take a look at the names of sponsors indicated in the backdrop. Activities of MMA always received wide media coverage and we thank the members of media. Some of them attended this full conversation, uh, full convention today. 
management students and delegates faculties sponsoring management institutes you are the heart and soul of this convention and your enthusiastic participation made it a grand success i would like to personally thank mma management committee headed by mr mahalingam president mma for their guidance and active involvement my colleagues in the convention committee for their ideas support and suggestions i wish to acknowledge and thank student volunteers from various colleges who have been with mma for the last two months coordinating various activities related to the management convention and the chanakya mastermind i must make a special mention about satyanarayanan aishwarya manigandan mithun kumar and yarini from prince sri venkateswami padmavadi engineering college for their excellent contribution to the success of chanakya the mastermind group captain r venkatraman gm mma for ably doing the mc with excellent time management and finally mma secretary secretariat headed by a dynamic energetic group captain vijay kumar vsm and his team for their sincerity dedication commitment and hard work in making this convention a grand success now i'm going to say three cheers please say hip hip hooray okay three cheers hip 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 thank you have a thank you thank you so much sir yes finally we have come to the end of this convention i jumped the gun sorry for that ladies and gentlemen may i now request you to rise for the national anthem <clears throat> जय गणमन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड भूकण बंगा जय हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जल तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाधा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे thank you for all those who are watching us convention online since morning have a great day and we have the feedback also we requested you in the morning i hope all of you have given your feedback if you have not kindly use the qr scanner and provide us your valuable feedback thank you get back home safe until we meet again have a great day